This is Jean Rubo from the Photoshop team at Adobe. In this video, I will show you how to edit the stroke and fill of a shape layer. Here I have a document with a single shape layer. When I select this shape layer in the Layers panel, I can edit the stroke and fill using the Options bar for any of the vector tools. By vector tools, I'm referring to the Shape Tools and Pen Tool, as well as the Path Selection and Direct Selection tools. As you can see, the shape layer stroke and fill options are available in the options bar for all of these tools. Also, note that the stroke and fill settings reflect the settings of the currently selected shape layer. If there is no shape layer selected in the layers panel, the settings in the options bar will only affect the next layer that is created. Now I'll go into more depth on the various panels in the options bar for the vector tools. Here's the fill panel that I briefly talked about in another video. Once again, there are four types of fill. No fill, you'll see the area inside the shape is now transparent, solid color, gradient, and pattern. When you select a fill type, the panel changes accordingly. The no fill and solid color sections both allow you to select from a list of swatches. If you choose one of these swatches in no fill mode, it will automatically switch to a solid color. This recently used colors bar at the top of the panel shows colors that have been selected in one of the shape layer panels or selected as the foreground or background colors. Clicking on the swatch at the upper right will open the color picker, which is another way you can choose a solid color. The gradient section allows you to choose from a list of gradient presets and there are some basic gradient editing controls as well. Here I can add stops by clicking under the gradient swatch and double click on the stop to open up the color picker. I can delete a stop by dragging it off of the panel. I can work with opacity stops as well using this control and then delete them in the same way. There are also other gradient controls such as type and angle. If you find that you need more advanced gradient editing you can open up the full gradient editor by clicking on the swatch. The pattern section also has a preset selector along with a scale setting. The various sections of the panel have corresponding flyout menus that allow you to change the view of the panel or even save and load presets. I will get into the copy and paste options in another video. The stroke color panel has exactly the same controls as the fill color panel, except that it obviously affects the stroke rather than the fill. So I'll move on to the stroke weight slider. There are multiple ways to work with this control. You can use the scrubby slider, just hover over the stroke label and drag to the left and right. This will change the stroke weight value in increments of one integer. If you want finer grained control, you can use the regular slider like this. With this slider control open, you can use the up and down arrow keys and preview the change right on the image in real time. If you know the exact value you want to use, you can always enter it here in the text field. You can change the units by typing in a specific unit abbreviation, or you can right click on the field and choose a new unit value. Finally, there's a Stroke Details panel. This is where you edit everything else about the stroke. The panel itself has a list of presets. These top three are the three default presets that ship with Photoshop. You can also save your own presets, which I'll get to in a bit. You can change the alignment of the stroke, as well as the caps, which applies to dashed and dotted lines, and corners. The More Options button opens up a dialog where you can make more edits to your dashed and dotted lines. This makes it likelier for the preset to look good in a number of different stroke weights and resolutions. You can also use specific units here just like in the stroke weight field. One thing I really like is that the scrubby slider is available for the dash and gap settings. Just click on the dash or gap label and drag to the left and right to update it. This will update on the image in real time, which is so helpful when working with dashed or dotted lines. Once you have the stroke set up the way you want it, you can save it as a preset. Here I'll save a centered version of the dotted stroke by clicking on the Save button. 
When I click OK, my new preset will be added to the Stroke Details panel, and I can select it just like the others. So that's how to work with the new Stroke and Fill settings for shape layers in Photoshop CS6.